Well, hello, and once again, welcome to Doc Onko's Physics. Keith Onko here. What we want to take a look at today is momentum in one dimension. We've already looked at um, a lesson of momentum in one dimension, but now we want to look at some problems. Uh, and specifically, we want to look at inelastic collisions. An inelastic collision is one where the two objects, a totally inelastic collision, is one where two objects collide together and they stick together. They do not bounce off of each other in any way. They, the object A, we have an object A and an object B, and they come together, they collide, and they stick together. It could be clay, it could be uh, two car, uh, train cars colliding and coupling together. Um, but we, we only deal in totally elastic collisions and totally inelastic collisions in a beginning physics course. Later on, if you take subsequent physics courses, we can have combinations of both. Uh, so what we want to look at is inelastic, and inelastic is where they stick together. So over on the left-hand side here, we have our before situation. And uh, in our before situation, we've got object A, which has a mass of 5 kilograms and is moving to the right with a velocity of 4 meters per second. Object B is just sitting there. It has a mass of 3 kilograms, and initially it's got a velocity of 0. All right? They are going to hit, they're going to collide, they're going to stick together, and then they're going to take off. My guess is that they're going to take off in that direction. And what we would like to know is, once they stick together, what's going to be the velocity of the objects stuck together after, after they collide? So we still have this beautiful equation up in the right hand side, upper right hand side, and that's our conservation of momentum equation. We cannot use conservation of energy in any way for this, uh, this type of collision because conservation of energy doesn't hold. When, when objects hit uh, and they stick together, there's deformation, there's heat loss, there's other things that we cannot account for easily. Right? And so conservation of energy does not happen, but conservation of momentum does happen. Okay? So we know the mass of object A and the velocity of object A before they collide, the mass of object B and the velocity of object B before they collide. What we've got to do is we've got to figure out, you know, how are we going to treat the right-hand side after they collide? But let's look at the left-hand side first. So the, the momentum of object A here is just going to be, momentum of object A is going to be the mass of object A, 5 kilograms, times 4 meters per second, and that's going to be 20 kilogram meters per second. So that's going to be the momentum of object A. All right. What's the momentum of object B going to be? Well, that's pretty easy. It's going to be 3 kilograms times 0. So the momentum of, of B before they collide is just 0. And so the total is going to be 20 kilogram meters per second. And that's going to be the, the momentum after they collide as well. So 20 kilogram meters per second is going to equal the mass of A times the velocity of A prime plus the mass of B times the velocity of B prime. Well, we know the mass of A and the mass of B, they haven't changed, they've just stuck together. What we've got to figure out is how do we treat the velocity of A prime and the velocity of B prime? Well, one of the things that we know is true is they're stuck together. Right? And so what can we say about VA prime and VB prime? Well, they have to be the same. If the objects are stuck together, they're moving along together at the same rate. Otherwise, they would unstick. But they don't unstick. They stay stuck together. So VA prime and VB prime are the same thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace those with just V prime. So 20 kilogram meters per second is equal to m a v prime plus m b v prime. All right. Well, I know what m a and m b are again, so I'm just going to plug those in up here. So again, 20 kilograms meters per second is equal to m a. Well, m a is five kilograms times v prime plus m b is three kilograms. times V prime, all right? We can factor the, uh, the masses out here and we get 20 kilogram 
meters per second is equal to 8 kilograms times V prime. All right. I do a little arithmetic here and then I should get V prime is equal to 20 kilogram meters per second divided by 8 all right, and that's 2.5 meters per second. So the velocity of the blob, if you will, after they collide is going to be two and a half meters per second. So does this make sense? Well, sure. I mean, if, if object A was traveling at four meters per second before they collide, and then they collide and stick together, and now that object, the, the, the mass of object now has, has more mass than it had because it's got object A and object B, I wouldn't think that that object would speed up. I would think that it would slow down somewhat, and that indeed is what happens. All right. So we had four meters per second for object A before. Object B had zero meters per second for its velocity. And now we have a final velocity of our object moving at two and a half meters per second. Okay. So this is how we do the momentum in one dimension for any elastic collision. They are the same in each and every case. Right? We're going to still use our conservation of momentum equation. But the one thing that we can change in this equation is what happens with VA prime and VB prime. These are both going to be the same value. So we can take away the A and the B part, and it just becomes V prime. We have one equation, we have one unknown, and we can solve. I hope that helps. Have a great day.